So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello there, this is Robin Norgren and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You can find all the work that I do on my links on Instagram on either my account Robin underscore Norgren or at UBU for Life. Let's start with some words from a book called Your Story is Your Power by L. Luna and Susie Herrick. I need to listen well so that I hear what is not said. Duly. Maricela. In order to take back your story, you first must know yourself. Becoming more aware is a process akin to looking for a light switch in a dark room. You might pass your hands over the dark walls for a long time, or you might find the switch rather quickly. But either way, once you find the switch, the light goes on in a way that shifts your perception of everything. You can never unsee what you've seen. And with this newfound understanding, you receive the greatest gift of all, choice about how you want your life to unfold. The path to seeing the fullness of your story starts with recalling memories, experiences, and the important twists and turns you made along the way even as your story continues to unfold. While writing down your story might seem like a large task, think of it as a discerning road map that will keep you from going down rabbit holes and getting lost in random minutia. Some of the benefits include, you will become more aware of what has affected your emotional life. You will gain awareness about how you felt you ought to behave and you'll get to observe and evaluate whether or not those behaviors are not in your best interest now. You will identify your blocks and you will get to decide if they are helping or hindering you from moving forward toward the life that you crave. You will develop a friendly awareness of yourself, also called a third party observer. And the observer will be a compassionate helpmate as you navigate your journey. Your story is composed of three intersecting narratives, your cultural story, your family story, and your personal story. The truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off, as quoted by Gloria Steinem. Some words from the book, The Burning Word by Judith M. Kunst. For me, the Jewish practice of dwelling on scripture as a portion has come to seem more real than the Greek influenced Christian practice of moving through it as a passage. Yet when I look again at the Psalm that first woke me up to the power of the Bible's language, I am somehow not surprised that it seems both, it, it contains both ideas. He guides me in right paths, the psalmist declares, and then later, you spread a table before me. Passage and portion, silence and speech, soul and body. No one of these taken separately can fully contain the power of God's word or the shocking realness of his intent to offer it to us. We need them all. Perhaps the best acknowledgement of this need is the Jewish bat bar mitzvah, 
the ritual reading of scripture that every observant Jew formally undertakes as an adolescent. For many months before their 13th birthday, young Jews of every stripe, Orthodox or Reform or Conservative, must choose a portion of Torah, study it, digest it, and learn how to pronounce it and write it in Hebrew, the original tongue by which it was given to Moses and to Israel. Then, in a public and highly celebrated ceremony, each young person declaims the scripture out loud in the synagogue and offers his or her interpretation of its meaning. The Bar Bat Mitzvah is a major rite of passage, a sacred, concretely experienced passing from childhood to adulthood. It has become my conviction that the spiritual redemptive passage Christianity aims for is ultimately not achievable without engaging with the here and now as a portion of God's full revelation to humanity. Getting to the true, in other words, is not possible without deep, deeply encountering the real. Torah offers very specific instructions about how to do this. Now I am commanding you today is not difficult for you or beyond your reach. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Stringing words together into poems or stories or sermons is one way of living out those instructions. Packing a dog-eared Bible in your suitcase on every trip you take is another way. The Talmud offers yes, yet another way, urging every Jew to write out the entire Torah once in, in the course of a lifetime, to physically feel beneath the fingers that sacred text, that perpetual event, that demand more real than a mountain, that is the Word of God. This is not simply a mundane copy job, just as my piece about Jesus' body was not a simply a repetitive description nor was my encounter with Psalm 23 simply reading out loud. Such encounters with the Bible are holy events. They are acts of reverence that honor the, Bi the Bible by simultaneously claiming it as our own and confessing that it can never be owned by us or nailed down by our particular faith tradition. They acknowledge God's word as pure gift ours and not ours all at once. From Taking Flight by Kelly Ray Roberts When our eyes see our hands doing the work of our hearts, the circle creation is completed inside us. The doors of our souls fly open and love steps forth to heal everything in sight. Michael Bridge Like our art, our memories are deeply personal. Memories both joyful and painful blend into our everyday lives and shape us into what we are today. Have you ever thought about who you were in years past affects who you are becoming now? Perhaps you're where I was before I experienced the healing powers of art. So resistance to allowing difficult memories to define who you are that you don't acknowledge their impact on your life today. By trying to keep the hard stuff of our lives at bay, we never quite allow ourselves the opportunity to sit with the hurt, own it, then move past it. We fail to realize that pain needs to be expressed so that the person we were meant to be has room to breathe, to grow, and to become. Creativity that can, can be that release that we need. For me, it wasn't until I discovered my art that I really began to sit with all that I needed to and allow the breath of life to filter out the pain of what I needed to take with me and what I needed to leave behind on the journey of who I was becoming. Of course, I didn't expect this to happen. I thought I was just having fun getting my hands covered with glue and paint. 
but over time I felt a release of old wounds and expression of new joys. I consider it a happy accident that I, in many ways, pay tribute to many of my past experiences and memories while returning to and becoming the person I was meant to be. Simply creating did this for me. And it can do it for you too.